Hello everyone, my name is Yang Chen. I'm from Georgia State University. Today I'm going to give a presentation and the topic is does imaging of time series help flyer forecasting? To begin with, I'd like to provide some background information regarding the solar flyer. Solar flyers are sudden flashes of increased brightness on the sun. An example of solar flyer is the pact on the right hand. Solar flares are logarithmatically classified into five classes of A, B, C, M, and X, from weaker to stronger. Based on knowing flares, a coronal mass ejection, or CME, is released by a stronger solar flare, which is a large explosion of plasma and magnetic field. CME can potentially cause geomagnetic storm with direct impacts on astronauts satellites, and even ground-based technologies and power grids. Over the past two decades, researchers have implemented various methods to classify strong and weak solar flares, including the logistic regression, the KNN, the base network, the support vector machine, and the neural network, and they obtained huge success. However, comparing the reported forecasting performances of these models is not feasible and the reasons can be summarized as follows. First, these studies employ different sampling strategies. Second, they are not evaluated on the same public data set. The third one, there exist minor or major differences in the problem formulation. For example, some studies work on regression tasks while others were focused on classification issue. Even for the classification issue, it can be classified into multiple or binary classification problems. The last reason is this works applied different pre-processing strategies. In sum, each of these decisions changes the difficulty of the task, which makes the numerical comparison of the reported scores meaningless. To remedy these issues, a possible solution is to use the same dataset and same processing pipeline which can compare different models fairly. Therefore, a public benchmark dataset, namely SWAN-SF, is selected in this study. The goal is to provide shared experimental setting and comparable results. Next, I'm going to introduce some details about the data source. The full name of the SWAN-SF benchmark dataset is based by the analytics for solar flares. SWAN SF is a large collection of multivariate time series extracted from sharp series. This data set includes five temporal non overlapping partitions over eight years. The partitioning idea is to let each partition contain approximately an equal number of X and M class flyers. In this undersampling method, the number of instances of the majority classes and the minority classes become equal where the ratio of the individual classes are preserved from the original data set. In addition, the two selected partitions are rescaled into the range of minus one to one, which is required by the imaging algorithm utilized in this study. Moreover, missing values are imputed with linear interpolation. In this undersampling method, the number of instances of the majority classes and the minority classes become equal where the ratio of the individual classes are preserved from the original data set. In addition, the two selected partitions are rescaled into the range of minus one to one, which is required by the imaging algorithm utilized in this study. Moreover, missing values are imputed with linear interpolation. After introducing the data, I'm going to elaborate the primary part of this paper, imaging of time series. The goal is to provide a new angle to classify flyers based images. The idea is to use different imaging algorithms to encode a unitary time series into an image with preserving temporal dependencies between observations. Some visualization examples are on the right hand. The main imaging techniques involved in this work are Gramian angular field and the Markov transition field. The reason for converting time series into images is because we want to take advantage of the power of deep neural networks, especially the CN-based architectures. 
So how the Grammy Angular field works? Let's look at the processing pipeline of the GF algorithm. Suppose a given input capital X is a time series with n time steps. Typically, the first step of GF algorithm is to rescale X into a target interval, for example, minus one to one, and denote it as X tiled. In our study, this operation is finished in our pre-processing phase. The second step is to transform rescale sequence into the polar coordinate system with provided equations. Since X tau belongs to minus one to one, so the phi i will belong to zero to 180 degrees. There are two primary advantages in this transformation. First, the entire encoding process is batch active as R cosine function is monotonic. Second, the polar coordinate system preserves temporal dependency by using the radial coordinate R Ri. So how the Grammy angular field works? Let's look at the processing pipeline of the GF algorithm. Suppose a given input X is a time series with n time steps. Typically, the first step of a GF algorithm is to rescale X into a target interval, for example, minus one to one, and denote it as X tiled. In our study, this operation is finished in our pre-processing phase. The second step is to transform a rescaled sequence into the polar coordinate system with provided equation. Since X tiled belong to minus one to one, so the phi i will belong to zero to 180 degrees. There are two primary advantages in this transformation. First, the entire encoding process is batch active as arc cosine function is monotonic. Second, the polar coordinate system preserves temporal dependency by using the radial coordinate, which is R in this equation. However, in the GF algorithm, it uses matrix to preserve temporal dependencies. And there are two forms, including GSF and GDF. S stands for the summation operation, and D stands for the difference operation. Let's take the GSF as an example. We can see it is a n by n matrix, and each element calculates the similarity between two angulars corresponding to the time steps from the original time series. In this way, two forms of GF matrix can be constructed. Eventually, we can save matrix as images, and the images will as inputs transferred into CNN-based models. This is the framework conducted in our experiments. We can see from left side, the partition one and the partition two will go through same processing, but the unassembling only applies to the partition one. Next, three imaging algorithms will be applied to derive training and test image datasets and training image dataset will as inputs to train a LearNet file model, which is a CN-based neural network. In the other hand, we select SVM as a baseline classifier since they have similar ability in the mathematical concept. Finally, the test data dataset partition two will evaluate different classifiers and report performance with TSS and HS scores. Here are the experimental results for comparing different algorithms. We can see SVM-based classifier can achieve 0 0.8 with TSS and barely reach 0 0.3 with HSS. Regarding imaging algorithms, MTF with LearNet file performs the best, but still have a large gap compared to TSVC algorithm. The reason might be MTF measures the probability of transition between states of a time series. Therefore, it may capture the patterns and fluctuations more distinctly than GEF. In our experiments, we didn't see expected performance with the GEF algorithm. So can we improve the GEF by any means? With having this question, let's look at the current GEF. For example, the GSF. As we can see in the GSF matrix, only the angular coordinate was utilized but the radio information was not. 
but the radius are temporary information transformed from the original time series as well. So there are two questions. First, can we find a way to encode radio information into the GSF? Second, will it be effective? Next, I'm going to introduce a modified Grammy angular field proposed in this paper. The modified GF is based on our assumption that is the time series observation closer to one another have stronger correlations than those temporarily farther apart. For example, given a time series, the first time point and the second time point have a stronger correlation compared to the first time point with the third time point or other subsequent time points. With this idea, we define a weighting matrix capital W. I and G are the index of time steps. I minus G will be the distance between two points. The final weight will be one minus the absolute value of distance over the total length of a time series. In this way, the closer time points have larger weights, while the further time points have lower weights. Meanwhile, the radio information obtained from the original time series is utilized. Then the weighting matrix W will be parameters to multiply the original GSF or GDF matrix. Note that that is the element multiplication. The result will be the modified version of GF. Here is an example. Suppose we have a three by three GSF matrix. According to the defined weighting matrix, we can obtain W, which is also a three by three matrix. For example, for the upper left corner element, which is I equals G equals one. So the weight is one. And for the upper right corner element, um, the I equals one and G equals three. So the weight is one over three. Our other elements can be calculated in a similar way. Actually, we can see the weighting matrix follow a linear form. Finally, we can obtain the modified GSF matrix which has linear transformation with the original GSF. We applied this idea into the original GSF and GDF to obtain the modified GSF and the modified GDF. Next, we add these two new imaging algorithms into the mentioned framework and evaluate them again. From the new experimental results, we can see the modified GSF gained a huge improvement compared to the original GSF. And the GSFR even has a more dramatic performance boost with HSS. It can reach 0 0.38. That is better than the SVM-based algorithm. If you remember that, the HSS of TSVC is barely 0 0.3. Moreover, the modified GADF has also made some improvements with several cases, but not consistently and not insignificantly. Here are the visualization results of images derived by five imaging algorithms. There are three multivariate time series instances and top five selected parameters. Comparing the GSF and the GSFR, we can find GSFR has a stronger linear tendency by multiplying the weighting matrix. However, the GADFR doesn't have significant differences with the original GADF images. We will explore this finding in the future, but two conclusions can be safely inferred in our experiments. First, adding radio information into the construction of GSF and GDF is useful. At least, it can provide more information for the CN-based model. Second, Different imaging algorithms might need to apply different weighting metrics to obtain improvements. In sum, this study provides a new angle to approach the flare forecasting problem by converting multivariate time series into images. With adding radio information into the original GF, the modified GSF achieved a significant improvement in the classification task. The effectiveness of GSFR can be regarded as a proof 
that this new approach can tackle flare forecasting problem. More appropriate weighting function will be explored in the future work. Here are the paper referred for making these slides. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to let us know if you have any question or advice about our work. Thank you so much.